in video number 54 I showed you my technical ideas for the green hat switch decoder power stage. In the meantime I have received the prototype boards and made some good progress on the software side. So it's time for a quick update. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. First I would like to welcome all new subscribers to the IOTT channel. Thank you for joining and thereby signaling your interest in the topic of using sensors, microcontrollers and other IoT devices to control a model railroad layout. Every click on the like button below and every subscription to the channel helps to promote these videos and the IoTT channel in general, so I really appreciate. And if you are not a subscriber yet, you might want to consider doing what I just recently learned is called the YouTube Triathlon. Like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. I also would like to thank all of you for your support this year. I always enjoy reading your comments, either in the comment section below, via email or in one of the several social media groups where I normally post links to my videos. I do not always react to your comments directly, but rest assured that I read all of them and your thoughts and suggestions normally make it into a video in one or another way. And in particular, I want to thank all of you who made use of the donation link that I started to add in the video description a few weeks ago. I really appreciate your support, particularly in this COVID-19 restricted year. Due to some health preconditions resulting from an accident I suffered roughly three years ago, I chose to play it safe and stay home most of the time. This was of course very good for publishing new videos, but much less attractive from an economic point of view, so your donations help to cover at least some of the cost of the channel and related development work. Thank you! Looking ahead, I wish all of you a Merry Christmas along with a few peaceful days with family and plenty of time for playing with trains. And then a Happy New Year with the hope that we will be able to return to a somewhat normal life in a not too distant future. Ok, back to the topic of this video, the green hat switch decoder. In video number 45 I showed how it is possible to create a power stage that can drive all type of switch machines, from dual coils AC or DC to bipolar coils, from stall motors to servos and even brushless motors. So I went ahead and designed the PCB for it, or as it turned out, the PCBs because for space reasons I had to separate the power stage PCBs from the PCB with the common functions such as servo driver and IO chips so that I could double stack the PCBs into a smaller housing. With that concept it became possible to fit four power stages and the main PCB into a housing of about 4x4 four four inches. Of course the disadvantage of the concept is higher production and assembly cost. Producing two different PCBs is obviously more expensive than making just one and the space saving sandwich construction requires manual as assembly, which of course adds to the cost as well. So after looking at the potential cost I decided to do a second version of the PCB with slightly different features. Instead of supporting all kinds of power modes I just focused on servos, as they offer very nice and flexible movements and programmable stopping positions. The advantage of the approach is that it is possible to make a switch decoder for 16 servos on less of the space needed before 4-4 multi-drive outputs. Here are the specifications of the servo only decoder as it stands right now. 16 output ports for RC servo servos like the SG90 and others, providing 5 volt ground and the servo position signal. 32 input lines to connect buttons or sensors. 
onboard NeoPixel LED and Pigtail for up to 32 more NeoPixels to display servo position or other layout information like block detector status etc. A DC power check for supply voltages of 7 to 24 volts. An onboard DC-DC converter to supply the servos with regulated 5 volt DC. An 8 pin head connector for the IOTT stick and a 12 pin extension board connector which allows for daisy chaining up to 4 green heads and be controlled by one single IOTT stick. That effectively makes it a super sized decoder for up to 64 servos and 128 buttons or other inputs. And as always when using the IOTT stick the green head can react to commands from a wired DCC or Loconet interface as well as commands received via Wi-Fi either in Loconet over MQTT or native MQTT format. Plus I am adding a DCC from MQTT mode as well so if you use a smartphone DCC viewer as introduced in video number 56 you can have the green hat listen to DCC commands communicated via Wi-Fi. And in the future there will be support for the LLC as well, so there are plenty of communication options. On the output side, each output can be programmed individually per servo to react to switch or signal commands from the DCC command station as well as to block detector, button and analog messages from the layout control bus. I am also thinking about supporting input from transponders, so you could have a switch position being set based on which train is approaching. Minimum and maximum position as well as rotation speed of each servo can be configured individually as well. And yes, the servo moves can be configured to overshoot or bounce back or have a hesitation. Watch video number 55 if this sounds like Greek to you. The two buttons per channel can be used as local input buttons to set the switch to a particular position. For example, if you would like to have an activator right next to the switch, so it can be operated by an engineer. Buttons can either send closed, thrown or toggle commands. When using DCC, this is of course limited to the green hat, but when using Loconet, all input is communicated via the network. So if you have a remote CTC panel that displays switch positions, it will be updated immediately when an operator presses a local button. If you don't use local buttons, you can use the inputs for general buttons or sensors, like for example block detectors. Any sensor reporting on and off by pulling the signal line to ground will work. That's the same as on the yellow hat. The LED chain is limited to 32 LEDs plus the onboard LED. The idea is to use it for displaying servo positions or activator button statuses. And as with the blue hat and yellow hat, the LEDs can have individual colors and can be static or blinking with various transition modes. Like the other hats, the green hat will have a configuration web page and the standard configuration of just 16 switches with input buttons and consecutive switch addresses will be configurable with the click on a default settings button, so don't worry. On the other hand, if you wish, it will also be possible to, con to configure outputs, buttons and LEDs individually, just as on the other heads. It's up to you. Right now I am working on the final details of the stick firmware and when done I will do the configuration web page. This should be done by the end of the year. The hardware needs a few minor changes as expected, but overall it works as intended. So at this point in time I think a release sometimes in January is realistic. For the other version with the multi-format power stage, I am not sure yet what I will do. For sure I will build the prototype and make it work, including the necessary software changes which are not dramatic. Most likely I will then just release all design information 
so anybody who wants can build it. But probably I'm not going to add it to the Tindy product listing. We will see. And that's it for the update on this exciting project. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. And if you have questions or suggestions regarding the features of the green hat, please leave me a note in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.